In this video, we are going to talk about the differentiation of parametric functions. Now we already know the differentiation of many types of functions like logarithmic ones, exponential ones, implicit ones. But this video is dedicated to the parametric functions and their differentiation. First let's understand why the word is called as parametric because there is involvement of a parameter in such type of functions. Usually what used to happen was we would have been given a function say y is equal to sin x and we were asked to differentiate with respect to x. So I would have easily found out dy by dx is equal to cos x and that was the answer. That means that time my y was a function of x. But suppose if y is not a function of x but y and x both are individually functions of some other thing, some other parameter, then we say that we are going to study about parametric functions. What I mean to say is suppose I have x as sin t and I have say y as cos t. Here you see x is a par x has a parameter t involved y has a parameter t involved so basically x is a function of t y is a function of t where t is a parameter that is what i'm saying if x is a function of t y is some other function of t then i say my t is what my t is called the parameter and my x and y are called parametric equations or parametric functions. So they are called parametric functions or equations. Right? Now, x and y are something of this sort. T is called as the parameter. Now, my concern is how to differentiate such kind of questions. What will be dy by dx for this question? That is my concern. So the criteria is involved and there are two steps for the same. The first step is you have to focus on removing or eliminating the parameter. Removing or eliminating the parameter is step 1. The second step is then you have to differentiate with respect to x in order to find out dy by dx. So dy by dx will be basically equal to what? You have to differentiate this y also and x also. y is a function of t so you will be finding out dy by dt upon for dx what you will do is for dx you have to again differentiate x with respect to t so you will be differentiating x with respect to t and you see that dt and dt in short cancel only so that is why we are able to find dy by dx from this method if still not understood so much properly we will be seeing some questions in the next videos and the things will become crystal clear